Hi, my name is Randall Lesk. Welcome to my home practice. This class is called Hips, Hands, Heart. You'll move through a series of postures that will open up the hips, that will engage the core and work you into some hand balances. And there's also some heart openers at the end. Now there's options that go into more advanced, uh, intermediate advanced postures, but I give variations and options to open this class up to all levels. So please take what you want, leave what you don't want, and really make this practice your own. Begin in a tall seat and settling into your body and settling into your breath. Take a deep inhale and clear out your exhale. Do that again, inhale and clearing out, exhale. If you're familiar with the ujjayi breathing, engage that breath pattern now. Take a deep breath in and clear your breath out. Do that one more time, inhale, and clearing out the exhale sigh. Next, make your way onto your hands and your knees where you'll start to move through cat-cow pleats. And so with your hands set to shoulder width and your knees uh, hip width, start to move your spine up and down. So rounding your back to the ceiling and hanging down your head as you exhale your breath. And then when you inhale, drop your belly, arc forward your heart. And as you repeat that, just continue to cycle your breath through your body in a very pronounced and meaningful way so that the breath becomes optimized and your body starts to move on your breath versus running your breath along the rhythm of the body. Okay. Now make your way into a downward facing dog. Your heels may or may not touch onto the ground and your legs don't even have to straighten. But do aim for length in your spine by gripping down your fingers and engaging the arms and pulling your hips up and back. With the hands and the feet set, on your inhale now, come forward into a plank pose so the shoulders are on the wrists and the heels are on the toes. And then exhale, return your hips back up to the ceiling, downward facing dog. Repeat that, come forward, plank position, inhale and downward facing dog, exhale your breath. Again, forward, inhale, and exhale, down dog. This time when you inhale your breath, come forward to a plank, and then when you exhale, slowly lower yourself to the floor, and tuck your feet so the tops of the feet are down, and then rise to a cobra pose without much use of the arms. Recruit your spinal muscles instead. Exhale, bring the chest down again, and then rise twice more, inhaling, <clears throat> and exhale, bring down your heart. Third time's the charm. Rise up, Bhujangasana, the snake. Inhale, and exhale, spill down your chest to the ground. With the feet reset, press to plank or kneeling plank, and then up with the hips to downward facing dog. From downward dog, walk your feet forward. Take mid-sized steps so the hamstrings have a chance to open some more as you make your walk to the front of the mat. Once you arrive, take a half lift, inhale, and fold back down all the way when you exhale. Half rise again, inhale your breath, and forward bow, exhale. Now, when you inhale, Reverse dive, stand up and raise up your arms. Bring your hands down to chest center when you exhale your breath. And then lift your arms again, inhaling. And forward bow when you exhale. Take a halfway rise, breathe in. Exhale, fingers down, step back your right foot. Runner's lunge, leave your fingers on the floor, inhale. And then deliberately step back, downward facing dog, exhale. Move now into a plank position and lower, perhaps with your knees down, lower chaturanga or to the ground. 
Come through with upward dog or cobra pose. And exhale, downward facing dog. Raise up your right leg on the inhale. Then step forward on the exhale. Lower the back knee and raise up your arms. Kneeling lunge. Now inhale. Hands forward, step forward, fold at the top of the mat when you exhale. Halfway rise and breathe out and bow down. Now reverse dive, stand up, raise up your arms. Exhale, hands to chest center. Lift your arms again and breathe in. Pour yourself forward and fold when you breathe out. Halfway rise, inhale, fill. Fingers down, step back your left toes. Runner's lunge, leave your fingers down, breathe in. Downward facing dog when you breathe out. Now into plank pose, inhaling. And lower chaturanga or to the floor, exhaling. Upward dog or cobra. And now downward facing dog. Raise your left leg, inhale, and step forward when you exhale. Bring down your back knee, lift your arms, inhale your breath. Exhale, hands forward, step to the top of the mat and fold your body in half. Reverse swan dive, stand up, raise up your arms. And exhale, bring your hands to chest center. Lift your arms and inhale. Forward bow, exhale. Take a half lift, breathing in. Fingers down, step back your right foot. Runner's lunge to start. And then inhale, raise your left arm to the ceiling. Lean into the shoulder blades. Place your left hand down to the ground. And then three-legged downward dog, raise your left leg to the ceiling. Bend your knee, roll open your hip. Exhale your left knee to your left arm and tap it. And then kick up and back again. Now cross your knee to your right arm, squeeze and tap, and up and back again. This last time, bring your knee straight down the pipe to your nose and step forward your left foot. And once the foot is placed, straighten your left leg to pyramid and bow over top of it. When you inhale, lift and lengthen your spine forward and a pulse. And then exhale, take down the bow again. Lift, lengthen, inhale. Pulse down the bow again, exhale. One more time, lift and lengthen, breathe in, and pulse down the bow as you breathe out. Now when you inhale, re-bend your left knee, and exhale, step back, downward facing dog. Come forward to plank, inhale, lower chaturanga or to the ground, exhale, and then follow through upward dog, exhale to downward facing dog. Raise your right leg, three-legged downward dog, breathe in. Now as you exhale, pull your knee into your chest and step just part way forward on the mat. So you're in a walking stride stance. Initially, just slide back your hands and find the depth of your bow. You might take your hands up to your hips here or rest your hands on your thigh or your shin, but let your spine bow down in its length. Breathing into the backs of your legs. Let the back line of the body loosen off. Deep breath in. And deep breath out. One more time. Inhale. Lift and lengthen the spine a touch. And then bow down. Exhale your breath. With the hands on the hips, bring yourself all the way up to stand. And then step into your back leg and raise up your right leg, your front leg, and position yourself into tree pose. So assert your right foot to the inside of your left standing leg, and the leg presses against the foot as well. And then see if you can take your hands up, your arms up, facing your palms into one another. Go down with your left foot and grow up your spine and grow up your breath as you hold the shape of Vrikshasana. One more breath in. And then exhale your hands to chest center. Point forward your right knee. Inhale. And then kick your right leg back through space and lean forward your chest, coming into an airplane pose. Next, take your hands to the ground and find standing splits. From there, walk forward your hands to the top of the mat for three-legged downward facing dog. 
Inhale, come forward, plank or three-legged plank. And lower, exhale, chaturanga. Upward dog and downward facing dog. Raise your right leg, inhale. And then step forward your right foot and lower your left knee, kneeling lunge, raise your arms, breathe in. And then as you breathe out, half split pose, bow over the straightening right leg. And then repeat that, kneeling lunge, raise your arms up and bow down again, half split pose. One more time, reach up, breathe in. And then bow into Adha Hanumanasana, the half split pose. And you can stay there in the half splits or take a couple more rounds of the movement. Either way, the breath flows and the hamstring, you let it open. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, clear out. Now walk forward your hands and step forward to the top of the mat and fold over your leg. Inhale, half rise. And exhale, fold down again. Inhale, chair pose. Bend your knees and sit back into the hips. And then when you exhale, bring your ribs to your thighs and sweep back your arms. Repeat that. Come up, chair, breathe in. And then flush down, bow as you breathe out. Again, up and inhale. And flush down, bow as you exhale. One more time, rise up, inhale, stand up all the way, and exhale, sweetly swan dive down to the ground, forward fold. Take a halfway rise, breathe in. Fingers down, step back your left foot. And when you inhale, raise your right arm to the ceiling, lean into your shoulder blades. Three-legged downward facing dog from there. So raise up your right leg, bend your knee, roll open your hip. And exhale, drag your knee to your right outer arm and tap it. And then kick up and back on the inhale breath. Now take your knee to your left arm and tap it. And back and up. Last time, kick your leg up and back. And then bring your knee towards your nose and step forward your right foot. Come into pyramid shape with the legs, so make the right leg as straight as you can manage. And then as you hold the shape of the pose, lengthen your spine forward, lifting it a touch. Inhale. And then pulse down the bow. Exhale. Lift and lengthen. Inhale your breath. Pulse down, bow. Exhale. And again, lift, lengthen, breathe in. Pulse down, breathe out. Good. Step back into downward dog. Inhale, plank. And exhale, lower chaturanga. Upward dog, and you've got it, downward facing dog. Raise your left leg, breathe in. Fold your knee into your guts as you breathe out and step halfway up your mat. So remember that short step, slide back your hands. You can use your hands on your hips to square the hips off. So pulling back the left hip and feeding forward the right hip. And while the pelvic bowl tilts down, you may choose to bring your hands down your front leg again, potentially even onto the floor, or just leave your hands on your hips. That's fine too. But be breathing wherever you're at. And again, we're really focusing on opening the back line of the body, releasing tension from the hamstring. Take one more deep breath in. Bring your hand to your hips, breathe out, and then rise up to stand. And bend into your back leg so you can pop your left front leg from the floor. And then come into tree pose. So the right leg is the standing leg. The left foot sticks to the inside of the right leg. And then go ahead, see if you can lift up your arms. You might wobble a little here. There's no, um, there's no fault in that. So allow the breath to build the concentration of the mind. Allow the breath to stabilize the mind and the body. Take one more deep breath in here. As you exhale, bring your hands to chest center. Point forward your left knee, breathe in. And then as you breathe out, lean forward the chest and kick back your left leg. Come into an airplane pose. Try to keep the belly taut so you're not swaying your low back. And then bring your fingertips to the floor, dive down, standing splits. Next, walk forward your hands into a three-legged downward facing dog. Come forward, plank or three-legged plank, inhale. Lower half or fully to the ground, exhale. Upward dog or cobra pose, breathe in. 
and downward facing dog when you breathe out. Next, raise your left leg up, inhale, and bring your knee towards your chest, step forward, exhale. Lower the right knee and raise up your arms, kneeling lunge, inhale, and then half split pose, Adha Hanumanasana, exhale. Repeat to kneeling lunge, breathe in, and bow again as you breathe out. And you'll recall you can continue this movement or stay in Adha Hanumanasana, the half split pose whether you're moving or you're choosing the static posture, the breath remains very much alive and dynamic. Okay. Now rebend your left knee and walk forward your hands. You'll then just simply step forward the right foot to the left foot and fold. Half lift and inhale. Fold down, exhale. Reverse dive, stand up and raise up your arms. And exhale, bring your hands to chest center. Lift your arms again and breathe in. And exhale, and forward, forward. Halfway rise, inhale your breath. When you exhale, step your right foot back. High lunge pose with the back knee straight, raise up your arms. And then when you exhale, T-shape your arms and twist to the left. Come back up, high lunge pose, breathe in, and then twist to the left again, exhale. The spine is upright. High lunge, twist again, exhale. High lunge pose, chest forward, arms up. And last time, exhale, twist and fold. Take a deep breath in. And when you breathe out, take your right hand down to the ground. Tent your finger. And then raise up your left arm, lean into the shoulder blades, and now set your right knee onto the floor mat. If possible, bend your right leg and with your left hand, reach back and capture your right foot in the hand grip. And then give a little kick of the foot into the hand and the hand the pressure against the foot. So you get a right quad stretch and a left chest opener. If this isn't possible for you, leave your left foot, sorry, your right foot on the floor and wrap your left arm behind your back instead. When you exhale, release your back foot and step into downward facing dog. Inhale, come forward into plank position. Lower, exhale, chaturanga. Upward dog or cobra pose and exhale, downward facing dog. Raise your right leg, breathe in. Come into a warrior one, so a short enough stance that your back heel is grounded and inhale, raise your arms up. Now, when you exhale, bow down inside of your front leg and set down all of your fingertips. When you inhale, open your left arm to the ceiling, T-shape the arm. Exhale, bring your left hand down. And then both arms up, warrior one pose, breathe in. When you breathe out, move just your left fingers to the floor. Leave the right arm up. Inhale. Right hand down. Exhale. Warrior one. Rise up. Breathe in. And then both hands down inside the front leg again. Open the left arm like a wing. Inhale. Left hand down. Exhale. Warrior one. Breathe in. Twist. So just the left fingers down when you breathe out. Keep the right arm up. Inhale. Right hand to the floor mat, exhale. Warrior one, rise up, breathe in. Last round, both hands down lightly. Open up your left arm, inhale. Set down the left fingers lightly, exhale. Warrior one, both arms rise, breathe in. Twist, so just the left fingers down, breathe out. Reach up with the right arm, inhale. Right fingers down, exhale. Now pivot over to your left. So wide-legged forward fold setup. You're facing the long edge of your mat with your toes and with your spine. Grow forward your spine with an inhale and then bow your way down, exhale your breath. Let the hands either stay on the floor or you could reach your hands behind your back and lace together your fingers if you like. Either way, have your feet established by pressing down through the balls of the feet and pressing out with the insides of the ankles. 
and then toy with a little bit more weight into the balls of the feet so you're not leaning back into your heels. And then just breathe here. Okay, press your arms straight, inhale. And then crawl your hands around to the right, facing forward on your mat again. You'll now set up for a lizard lunge. So move your right foot outside of your right hand. And either leave your hands there or bring your shoulder behind your right knee. So you're kind of like ducked down inside of the front right leg. Pull both thigh bones into the hip sockets. And give yourself a, a good amount of breath here, allowing the tension to detangle from your right hip. And if any time you need to um, come up to a higher height in the chest or untuck your knee from behind, uh, rather your arm from behind your knee, you're welcome to do that. So just make the shape work for you. Now turn your front foot out to the diagonal right and, and step your left foot outside your left hand and turn it out to the diagonal left. And from there you're going to squat down into Malasana, yogic squat. Have your arms inside of the knees and bring your shoulder blades onto the back so the chest goes high. And you don't have to worry about having your heels down here and you're always welcome to sit onto something even if that's the ground. That can help alleviate pressure from your knee joints. Deep breath in, and exhale, deep breath out. Again, full breath in, and exhale, heavy breath goes out. Now raise up your hips and let down your hands forward fold. And When you do that, swing out your heels as wide as the toes, so you have a wider than usual stance in your forward fold. sway a little the hips side to side just do something that feels really good for you right now okay heel to walk your feet back in to about pelvis width apart and then back up on your mat a little bit Prepare for crane pose. Now, if you want to skip crane pose, you just stay in forward fold. Otherwise, with a hand set shoulder width, bend at the arms and then try to insert your knees into your armpits. So you make a little shelf with the arms initially so the arms are bent. Over time, you make your arms straight, or straighter anyways. And then step or float your feet back to plank and lower chaturanga, upward facing dog. And downward facing dog from there. Looking forward. Okay, now set both of your elbows onto the floor so you come into a dolphin pose. It's a forearm downward facing dog. Some of you, if you have tight shoulders, you might want to put the palms of your hands together. I have my hands flat on the floor, but I'm pretty open through the shoulders. And then you can play with walking your feet in closer if you like, so long as you can keep your back long and your hips nice and high. Deep breaths in. And deep breaths out. Now raise both of your elbows off of the floor into downward facing dog. Raise your heels and bend your knees. Step walk or float your feet forward and fold. Inhale, reverse dive, stand up and raise up your arms. And exhale, bring your hands down to chest center. Lift your arms and inhale and rebound down when you exhale your breath. Take a halfway rise, breathe in. And fingers down, step back your left foot. You'll come to a high lunge pose. Inhale, rise up. And then when you exhale, split your arms to T-shape and twist over to the right this time. Inhale, come back up through center, high lunge pose, breathe in, face forward. And then right twist again as you breathe out. Shoulders stay on top of the hips. Untwist, high lunge, inhale. And right twist again when you exhale. Last time, high lunge and breathe in. Right twist and hold the shape of the pose. 
Really cinch in your waist as you hold the shake. Take a deep breath in. Clear your breath out. One more inhale. And now when you exhale, set your left fingers onto the ground. Lean into the shoulder blades. Breathe in. And then set down your back knee as you breathe out. Remember your options here are to A, um, leave your back foot on the floor and wrap your right arm behind your back. Or bend your leg, your back leg, and reach for your left foot with your right hand. So you find that quad and chest opener stretch. Let the breath flow to any areas where you feel a little sticky and stuck. Okay, release your bind, both hands to the ground. Step your way back into downward facing dog. You know this now, come forward, plank pose, breathe in. And lower chaturanga, breathe out. Upward dog or cobra pose, inhale. And downward facing dog, exhale. Now raise your left leg, breathe in. And step forward on the exhale, warrior one footing. So the back heel is down, the back foot's on turnout. Hips are squared forward, rise up to the warrior, inhale. When you exhale, bow down inside of the front left leg. Keep your right heel sealed on the ground. And as the fingers come down, lightly tent them. And then when you inhale, open just your right arm to the ceiling. Exhale, bring your right fingers back down to the floor mat. Warrior one, rise up, both arms, breathe in. And then twist, bring down just the right fingers. And leave the left arm up, inhale. Left hand down when you exhale. Warrior one, rise up, breathe in. Both arms down as you breathe up. Open the right arm up and inhale. Right fingers lightly placed to the floor, exhale. And then both arms up, warrior one, inhale. Twist again, right fingers down, exhale. Reach up with the left arm, inhale. Left hand down, exhale. Warrior one, rise up, breathe in. Final round, both fingers sets down. Open your right arm and inhale. Right arm down, exhale. Both arms rise, warrior one, breathe in. Twist, right fingers to the floor, left arm to the ceiling. When you exhale, set your left fingers down. Pivot around to your right, so wide-legged forward fold the second side, so the distance between your feet can shorten as your hamstrings start to open a bit more. Stay with active feet and active thighs and stay with a long back as you bow down. Now, if you're familiar with Shirshasana B, you can place your head to the floor. You want your hands flat onto the mat, the elbows bent at about a 90 degree angle. And then to come up, you don't want to jump up. Instead, pull in the belly and start to lift your heels off of the mat. You want your neck to be comfortable this whole time. Eventually, the toes might get lighter until the feet lift right up. and The legs, you zip them together from a V shape, bringing them above your head. And then to come out, hit reverse, so split the legs and slowly set your feet to the floor. The arms go straight, breathe in, and then just take down a bow when you breathe out. Okay, pivot around to your left, so face forward into the room. You're setting up for the lizard lunge again. So remember the left foot steps outside of the left hand. The femur bones, those are your thigh bones, they insert deep into your hip socket so that the legs are really supporting the weight of the pelvis. And you can duck down inside of the left leg and even tuck your arm behind your left leg if you like. Deep breath in. And exhale, deep breath out. Do that again, inhale. And clear out, exhale. One more time, breathe in. And let the breath go out. Now out, turn your front foot a little and then step your right foot outside your right hand. Come into Malasana, the second round. Now you're welcome to stay here or simply take a forward fold. 
what we're going to build into is firefly. So that's an advanced posture. If you're coming along with me, um, from a forward fold, you'll widen your feet to outer hip width apart, maybe even a touch wider. And you'll want to flatten your palms onto the floor with your fingers pointing forward. Next, squeeze your legs around your arms. And you'll need to bend your arms and sit your bum down onto the backs of your arms so the arms make a shelf for the legs. And then squeeze your arms with your legs good and tight so that you hug in and you pull your belly in and then one foot at a time, kick your legs forward. Squeeze, 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 squeeze and hold. And then to come out of this, uh, you might fall out of it or try to bend your legs and get your feet underneath you again. Whatever it takes for you to come out and then you'll just step back into downward dog. And from downward dog, you can hold there or you can flow there to wash the posture through. Okay. From downward dog, take a deep breath in. Exhale out. Raise your heels, bend your knees. Step or walk or float forward and fold. Halfway rise, breathe in and exhale, fold down as you breathe out. Reverse swan dive, stand up and raise up your arms and exhale your hands to chest center. Lift your arms on the inhale breath and fold down again, exhale. Now come into chair pose, so bend your knees and sit back to your hips. And then with the palms and prayer overhead, exhale and twist over to your left. Now, you're going to have to work to keep your knees side by side. So rein your right knee back so it's aligned with the left knee. So use your core for that. Now, looking down at the ground, pick up your right foot and then take a slow step way back on your mat so you land in a twisted lunge pose. Now, if you land short in that um, step back, then just take your hands down and adjust so the stance is truly long enough for the twisted lunge. You don't wanna be all hunched over in that shape. So with your palms together in front of the chest, reach forward your spine and then really engage through the waistline to wring out a deeper twist, a deeper rotation. Now inhale, unravel, high lunge pose. And then from there, you're going to turn into a warrior two. With the feet perpendicular, straighten your front left leg and raise up your left arm. Inhale. Now reach forward, 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 and then bring your left hand to your shin or to a block or to the ground and come into a triangle pose. So the arms are T-shaped. The spine is long and the front low ribs grip them in, so you're removing any element of back bend from the pose. And then just let your breath run here. Take one more deep breath in. And exhale, clear out. Okay, rebend your front knee, warrior two, inhale. And when you exhale, cartwheel your hands to the ground. You're going to plant your right hand underneath your shoulder and then step to a side plank. So turn to the outer edge of your back foot and step your left foot onto it to stack. Bend both of your ankles, pull up the tops of your feet. And then breathe in the strength of the side plank pose while she's tossing. Okay, now reach forward with your left arm. Inhale. And then plank. Exhale. Hold the plank and breathe in. Lower Chaturanga, breathe out. Upward dog and downward facing dog. Raise your right leg now, inhale. And when you exhale, step your right foot all the way forward. With the right foot down, runner's lunge. Take a deep breath in and clear your breath out. Now you're setting up for what's called an awkward pigeon. So with a strong bend in your right ankle, roll more onto the outer boundary of your right foot. So then your right knee pokes out to the right, your shin runs on a floating diagonal in front of you. 
And be really sure that you're magnetizing your legs underneath you so that you're not dropping into the joints at all. Instead, there's like a really, um, there's a buoyancy, there's an upward lift in the pose. Okay. And then side plank, this time, it's like you fell out of side plank. So with your left hand on the mat, pick up your right foot and step it behind you so that you flip over belly to the sky, heart arcs forward. If wild thing doesn't serve your shoulder, side plank, regular side plank is an excellent option. Now come up and out of the form to three-legged downward facing dog, listening here. Walk your hands back to your feet, standing splits. It's a lot, I know. Now from standing splits, you're gonna fold your right knee into your chest. Grab for your knee with your right hand and then stand up, bring your right leg with you. Once you're up, cross your right ankle on your left thigh. You'll make a figure four with your legs and then sit back like you're easing your bum into a chair. Now you can leave your hands on your hips or on your foot and your knee. And what I'm doing in the video is palms together in prayer at heart center, hook the upper arms in front of the shin and then you drive the shin against the arm and vice versa. You can stay in any of those options or come into another arm balance, Galavasana. So the hands climb out onto the floor in front of you. You bend your arms like Chaturanga, drive your right shin against your arms, pull up the belly, and then try to raise your back left foot from the floor. Where you're going to meet is in standing at the back of your mat. And then once there, just Close your eyes and feel the breath and feel how your current state has shifted from where you started your class today. Okay. When you inhale now, lift your arms up and exhale forward fold. Half rise and breathe in. Walk your hands ahead, downward facing dog. Three dog. From your downward dog, move to plank. You can leave out the vinyasa if your wrists are taxed. And then upward dog. And downward facing dog. Raise your heels. Bend your knees. Step, walk, or float forward and fold. Inhale, reverse swan dive, stand up and raise up your arm. And exhale, bring your hands down to chest center. Lift up your arms, breathe in. Exhale, forward fold. Now inhale, chair pose. So remember, bend the knees, sit back the hips. Bring your palms together in front of your chest. And this time you're going to twist over to the right. So it's the left knee you're going to have to pull back to rein in. Look down at the ground so the eyes are spotted on something still. And then once stable, pick up your left heel and then the left toes and then take a big step back on your mat. You're coming in to revolve lunge, remember. So a nice long stance so that your front knee is over top of the front heel and your back heel is over top of the back toes. So you're really stretched out in the stance so that you can really stretch out your spine and then that will give you room to twist your spine and still breathe. That will give you room for deeper core engagement without like kinking at your back. So in the shape of the pose, find a way with your breath. Take a deep breath in, clear out. Now unravel high lunge pose, inhale. Warrior two, exhale. And then as you inhale, straighten your right front leg, raise up your right arm. The sideways is lengthening here. And then exhale, reach forward, 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 cock back your hips. And once you can't reach anymore, let the right hand come down. Triangle pose, Uttita Trikonasana. So in the triangle pose, be sure that the front knee is unlocked. And also be sure that the front knee is pointing forward. So you really want to press down into the right big toe mound as an anchor point. And then as that foot anchors, you externally rotate your right femur bone, the thigh bone, to 
keep the knee pointing forward. Otherwise, the tendency is for the knee to turn in. Take a deep breath in. Clear out. Warrior two, rise up. Inhale. Side plank. So cartwheel down your left hand, plant it, grip your fingers. The right foot steps just to stack on the left foot. Bend your ankles, firm the legs, and breathe here in the strength of your body. Now inhale, reach your left arm forward, big sideways stretch. Exhale, plank. Hold there, inhale. And lower when you exhale, chaturanga. Upward dog or cobra pose. And downward facing dog. Now inhale, raise up your left leg, please. Breathe in. And then bring your left foot forward. From runner's lunge, take a deep breath in and clear your breath out. Now you'll scoot your left foot into the center of your mat. So just down from your face. We're coming into awkward pigeon again. So deep bend in the ankle and then let your left knee tilt open so that you're sort of riding the outer edge of the left foot. Continue to collect the energy of the legs beneath you. Continue to firm the core and use your breath. Okay, with the right hand gripped, it's gonna take your weight. You're coming into wild thing or into side plank again. So this time the left foot steps to stack or the left foot steps behind you. Push down with your right foot I like to leave my left heel high in wild thing. I just find that gives a little bit more space in my low back. Take a deep breath in. When you breathe out, come over three-legged downward facing dog. From three-legged dog with the left leg lifted, walk your hands back to your right foot, standing splits. Next, tuck your left knee into your belly and try to grab for your knee with your left hand. Push down with your right foot, stand up, bring your left leg with you. And then you're preparing for figure four again. So cross your bent left ankle on your right thigh and then ease back your butt. So remember, this is a fantastic stage to stay in. If you wanna come along for the arm bounds, bring your upper arms in front of your shin. Place your hands on the floor, shoulder width apart, and then you start to take weight into the palms of your hands. And as the weight goes into the palms of the hands, you really got to grip the belly up, push your shin into your arms. And the trick here is that your left ankle needs to hook around your outer right arm. And then eventually the right foot lifts and takes flight. Galavasana. Whatever shape you're in, uh, move to standing Tadasana at the back of the mat. And again, just feel sense the body, sense the quality of your breath, sense the stability of your mind. Deep breath in and exhale out. Now raise up your arms on the inhale, forward bow when you exhale. Half rise, breathe in and bow down again when you breathe out. Now in your forward fold, reach down and measure two fists of distance between your feet. So you're gonna wanna bend your knees enough that you can actually get your fists on the floor. Keep your legs bent for now and then peace finger grip. So hook your peace fingers around your big toes. Bend your elbows to the left and to the right. Padangustasana, start to pull down your spine. The legs might start to become more straight, but they don't have to. Move your shoulder blades up your back and let the spine be traction here. Stay where you're at or step your palms beneath your hands for Padahastasana. This can be a really nice wrist stretch, especially for those of you who went along for the ride with the arm balances. Okay, release your feet and walk forward your hands, downward facing dog. From down dog, move to plank. And then when you exhale, you're gonna lower all the way down to your stomach. Once on your belly, reach your arms back 
by your sides and grow your legs back and really embed the tops of your feet into the floor. Even like the beds of your nails, the, your toenails, push them, them down. And then hook back your tailbone, reach back your tailbone, hook forward your pubic bone. And with the arms by your sides, peel your chest off the floor. It's a modified locust pose. I like to bend my elbows. I find that helps me to pull up even more, engage my spinal muscles even more. Avoid looking up. Instead, just let the gaze of your eyes fall to the top lip of your mat. Continue to breathe as you hold the shape. Okay, exhale. Let yourself settle down and rest your head onto your hands. And give your hips a little wag so that the tension of the back dissolves, the work of the back dissolves. Let's set up for a second round like that. So with your arms by your side, initially have the tops of your feet pushing down onto the ground. And then if you're gonna lift your legs for full locus, lift the insides of the legs up so the tailbone still has room to reach back. And then you can reach your arms up and back or take your arms out in front of you. And what I'm doing in this video is I'm taking my arms behind me now, fingers interlaced. And then instead of lifting the arms up, reach your joined hands towards your heels so the shoulders pull back off your chest. Keep reaching back the tailbone. Deep breath in. And then let it all come down as you breathe out. Once your belly down, again, let the hips wag a little side to side. Let the body relax and restore. Now, coming into bow pose, if this doesn't serve your knees, then you'll stick with locust or locust variations. Otherwise, bend your legs and reach back and hold the tops of your ankles. So I like to hold to the outsides of my ankles versus the inner ankles. My knees tell me that. Now, you want to keep the pelvis grounded, and then you kick your shins back. Not so much up, but you kick your shins back and it's actually the strength of your legs that picks your chest up off of the floor and lets your chest breathe open. Okay, coming down onto the ground, let yourself rest again. Take a deep breath in and clear out. Next, turn over onto your back and we'll prepare for a bridge pose. Uh, moving into wheel as an option. So set your feet on the floor about pelvis width apart and scooch your heels in so that they're approximately underneath your knees. And as you press down with your feet, try to lift and flare apart your toes and drive your feet down and then raise your hips up while working your tailbone towards the spot between your knees. And as you do this, pull your feet towards yourself without actually shifting them on the mat. Now bend your arms into robot arms. So that means that you bend 90 degrees at the elbow so the hands stick up and the palms face each other and then push the backs of your arms down and as you continue to tilt the pelvis, the tailbone goes towards the knees, bring your chest towards your chin. And you can stay here or come with me now to work into a wheel pose. By placing your hands to the floor by your ears, your fingers will point towards your shoulders. Stick your elbows up and then lift onto the top of your head. And from the top of the head, start to dry the feet down again. Press down with the palms. And then you're really going to use the strength of your legs to lift you up. And then as you push down into the feet, you may or may not walk your feet closer towards you but push your chest towards the wall that you're now looking at. Keep hooking your tailbone towards the inner thigh so that the low back breathes some space. Let the opening be more isolated to the chest. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Take one more deep breath in and then Slowly bring yourself down by lifting the heels, tucking your chin, laying down your shoulders and then your hips. And then just lay on the ground for a moment without hugging your knees to your chest. Let yourself breathe here. 
let yourself feel. Okay, fold your left knee in towards your armpit, holding at about the shin area. And as you squeeze your bent leg down onto yourself, draw your knee also up towards your ear. This helps to lengthen the left low back and release it. Next, straighten your right leg down your mat, and then you'll take a spinal twist. So guide your left knee to the right and unleash your left arm to the ground beside you. So the left arm acts like a weight for the twist. If this is painful in your low back or groin, simply fold your bottom leg underneath your top leg or pop a block underneath your left knee. Let your body be really heavy. Let your eyes remain closed as the breath makes its way through your body. Take a deep breath in and clear your breath out. Okay, unwrap and then come into the second side. So fold your right knee in towards your armpit and slide your left leg straight down your mat. And then spinal twist to the second side. The offering is still there for you to fold your bottom leg underneath your top leg or pop a block beneath to support. Again, deep breath in and deep exhale out. Full inhalation and one last clearing exhalation. So now unwrap your twist and reset your feet to the floor, this time about mat width apart. And slowly windshield wash your shins side to side. So having your feet wide apart is really relevant to the targeted areas of this movement and stretch. If you find that wide feet is a little uh, touchy on your back or your groin, just make your stance a touch more narrow until the pain goes away. After a few more rounds of that, you'll settle into Supta Baddha Konasana. So that means that you lie on the ground with your legs in a diamond shape. So soles of the feet touching and the knees wide apart. You can adjust your feet closer to your groin or further away for your comfort level. And there's also the option to pop blocks underneath the sides of the thighs. And that's helpful if you're quite tight in the inner thighs. Rest your arms comfortably, shut your eyes, and just let yourself settle in here. And you can stay in Supta Baddha Konasana as a substitute for Shavasana. Or now gather your knees in and, and give them a little hug into your chest before spreading out into the traditional Shavasana pose. So the legs outstretched, the arms by your sides. You'll want your toes to turn out and your palms to face up. Support behind the knees can be helpful if you have um, tightness in the low back. And as you settle in, let yourself take a deep inhale and clear it out. Exhale. One more time. Breathe in and clear. Breathe out. Now allow yourself to rest into the stillness, the body, and the mind. Let go.
Okay, come back to your breath now. And then start to move your fingers and your toes, your hands and your feet. Eventually make your way to a fetal position and have a moment of transition here, a moment with yourself. From there, press yourself up to seated. Sit with your eyes closed. And in closing the practice, give thanks to the body for its mobility, to the mind for its strength, to the breath for its life, and your heart for its light. Namaste.